Good afternoon, everyone. Today we will have a Shiwi Zhu. He receives uh, his BS from uh, Southwest Yankton University and his master's degree from University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, both of them in civil engineer. And uh, currently, he is a PhD student uh, under the supervision of Professor Akali working on the evaluation of asphalt concrete aging characteristics and performance testers of materials. Please let's welcome to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my great honor to uh, present in today's case seminar series. Today, my topic will be influence of BCDI parameters on um, asphalt concrete aging rate using IFA specimens. So the authors of this paper include myself, Bonit, Arturo, and the advisors, advisors include uh, Professor Akadi and Professor Oto. So the agenda for today, this presentation will have five parts. The first introduction and then research objective, materials and methodology. Results and discussion, findings, conclusions, and uh, recommendations. So I'll uh, start with this introduction. So <clears throat> because of whether UV rays and moisture, aging contributes to the deterioration of asphalt concrete pavement. And uh, so the research objective of this study is to understand the influence of long-term aging on the cracking potential of AC using IFIT after a laboratory simulated age. So the second objective is to understand the effect of AC mixed design parameters on the AC aging rate. So I'll start with uh, the introduction of the materials we used in this study. We tested totally 16 mixes, including 12 plant produced mix and uh, four lab designed, lab produced mixes. In these 16 mixes, we included two SMA, SMA mixes, which is PM7 and the PM13. And the lab mixes 1 to 4 are designed to understand the binder source effect on the aging of uh, asphalt concrete. These 16 mixes are sampled, or the first 12 mixes are sampled from different contractors, different locations in Illinois. And uh, these 12 mixes have different mix designs, like ABR, asphalt content, um, different types of aggregate, and different types of binders. So we believe that these 16 mixes can well represent the mixes used and placed in Illinois. And Illinois Flexibility Index was used in this study. So the main parameter we looked in is the flexibility index. It was calculated based on fracture energy and the slope at inflection point. The fracture energy was calculated uh, based on the area underneath the curve in loading and displacement plot. And uh, we introduced another term, which is aging rate. So aging rate uh, it correlates with uh, aging susceptibility of uh, asphalt concrete, and it uh, it was calculated by the age flexibility index deduction uh, after aging in percentage. So the we used two aging methods in this study. The first is the modified Ashto R30. Why we call it modified? So in the original OSH to R30, the specimens used to age are the full appeals, which means you extrude your appeals from the computer, and then you age them in the open. But uh, a lot of uh, studies have convinced that this age method going to introduce geometric problems. So we modify it. We have completed, prepared IFIX specimens to age for 5 day and 85 C. We call it a modified H to R30. And 5 day 85 C, uh, it requires a 
long time of uh, aging, uh, which the contractors and a the agencies don't want. So we want to see if we can have a shorter period of time of aging that can predict the long-term aging performance of asphalt concrete. It does not need to actually simulate that much aging, but it can predict the performance. That's what we want. And that's the one we introduced here, which is the one day 95 state aging. So I'll jump to the test results. The first part is the FIDK curves. We, uh, these two mixes, plant mix two and plant mix three, we tested them um, under three temperatures. 75C, 85C, 95C from uh, aging duration from one day to seven days. So as you can see, flexibility index decreases consistently after aging. And with higher temperature, the AC, the apple concrete receives more aging. And of course, with longer period of aging time, the asphalt concrete receives more uh, aging too. However, uh, you can notice that, especially from the right plot of in this slide, you can see that after three days of aging, especially for 95C, the flexibility index converges, which help us to think about, think of that we may not need that long period of time to simulate the aging. We may start from a shorter time of period of shorter shorter uh, aging duration to predict the performance. And uh, PM2 and PM3, they are very similar mixes. They have just one different type of aggregate and uh, they perform absolutely different from the original to the aged specimens. So this also raises up a question, how the mixed design parameters affect our aging, uh, or especially aging rate. So I'll start with the loading displacement curves, because you know the flexibility index for energy and the slope were calculated based on these curves. So this uh, a plot that includes three curves, which includes unaged specimen, one day 95 cent aged specimen, and five day 85 cent aged specimen. As you can see, after one day 95 cent aging, the peak load increases a lot, and uh, after five day 85 cent aging, it uh, jump a little bit too. Uh, the peak load also increases, and but we cannot tell if the fracture energy are different for these three types of specimens. And, uh, but it's very clear that the slope or the curve after the peak load becomes steeper after aging, 1 day 95 c and 5 day 85 c So I'll uh, present the IFIC results for this 16 mixes tested in this project. Uh, we included the fracture energy, the post-peak load slope, and the flexibility index Fi in these two plots. And it's very clear that the fracture energy does not have a uniform trend after 1D95 state aging. So some of the mixes increase a little bit, some of the mixes the, they decrease a little bit. And also, after 5D85 state aging, we do not see that the fracture energy has a uniform trend. So we conclude that fracture energy does not uh, uh, have a change after 1 day 95C or 5 day 85C. And uh, as you can see, the slope, which represents the propagation rate of the cracking, it increases consistently for all these mixes. And uh, because the flexibility index was calculated based on the fracture energy and the slope, uh, so we conclude that the flexibility index decreases were mainly caused by the increase of the slope or the higher propagation rate of the cracking. 
It's very interesting to, to see that the flexibility index decayed. They have different slopes or different, as we talked about before, the aging rates, they are different for different types of mixes. So that's the main goal of this uh, paper, is to study the mixed kind parameters effect on the aging rates um, using IFIT. So we run the statistical analysis. So ob the objective is to understand the effect of AC mixed design parameters on the AC aging rate. And the method we used is uh, the simple and multiple linear regressions. But before that, we check the assumptions that here is like a QQ plot which is required for the t-test in the uh, linear regressions. When we, uh, when we are trying to see if the uh, predictors are significant or not. So needed transformation were, were performed, but I will not introduce here. So I'll show the statistical uh, analysis results. So we found out five significant mixed design parameters that have huge impact on the aging rate. Um, so the first one is the uh, voids in mineral aggregate, as known as uh, VMA. The second one is binder low temperature true grit. It's not the PG grit. Here we talk about the true grit based on the B, uh, BBR results. And the, set, the third one is the uh, ethyl binder replacement. And the fourth one is the mixed type, which we, here we, we refer to SMA or dense gritting mixes. The fifth one is the effective asphalt content. The significant mixed design parameters we conclude from these two aging masses are the same from this table. And uh, however, the beta value, which is the estimate of the slope, is different for 1 day like 5 c and 5 day 5 c But we'll come back later. First, I'll, I'll try to discuss why these uh, mixed design parameters have significant impact on the aging rate. So I'll start with the effect of uh, binder low temperature true grit. So we divide the, the grit for high grit and low grit. We found out that low grit is the most important one. And we conclude that softer binder does not only increase the original flexibility, which is what we want, but it also improves AC susceptibility to aging which means when you use softer binder, you get higher original flexibility index. Also, you're going to expect a lower aging rate, which means your mixes are more resistant to aging. Probably have more serviceability with respect to age. But uh, <clears throat> the second one is the effect of ABR. We see that with higher ABR, we see lower aging rate. It's very reasonable because if you have higher ABR, which means more proportion of your mixes are already in, has already been uh, aged in the field for many years, so there's smaller space for you to be aged more. But this is not the right approach to design an aging resistant mixes because it results in low flexibility index in general. So uh, we are not. We don't want to use the, the a, to, to increase the ABR to lower the age rate. The third discussion is about the mixed type. So the mixture types we discussed here will be uh, SMA and the dense graded mixes. SMA shows much better susceptibility. And what we found out from the later analysis, we see that this is mainly because of high quality aggregate with less absor absor absorption which induces higher effective asphalt content. And uh, I'll talk about the uh, effect of effective asphalt content. Here we talk about effective asphalt content, not about the uh, asphalt content. So there are different terms. So the effective asphalt content also consider the absorption of your aggregate. So higher effective asphalt content means thicker binder film. And which means it's harder to be thoroughly aged, which you're going to expect lower aging rate. So how you're going to achieve effective asphalt content? 
Basically, you have two approaches. First is to increase your uh, asphalt content, or you're going to have high quality uh, aggregates with lower water absorption, which which uh, we found out that the asphalt content is not a significant term, but the effective asphalt content is a significant term, which means the later one, which is use uh, aggregates with lower water absorption, is a better approach. Then it's the uh, effect of VMA. So the high VIF, which is a various inflation, uh, inflation factor, in the multi multiple linear regressions suggests that VMA is highly correlated with effective asphalt content. So we don't consider the, the effect of VMA is, is from itself. It's uh, because when you have uh, effective asphalt content, lower effective asphalt content, you always expect to have higher VMA. So here is some quantitative results uh, summary from the statistical analysis. As you can see, this is the 1D95C results, and this is the 5D95C results, and uh, based on the, your uh, significant uh, mixed denied parameters, this show consistent results. So with increase of BMA, uh, increase of low temperature sugar grade, APR, mixed type, PPE, weight EFF, your aging rate gonna decrease, increase, and then decrease. But what's interesting here is the absolute value. What does absolute value mean? It's like when you increase your BMA by one unit, your aging rate gonna decrease by 20.35%. And uh, we always see larger values under the 1D95C column then the 5 day 5 c column, which means <clears throat> since they have similar, uh, not similar, the same chance, we can see that 95C can actually predict the performance after 5 day 5 c And it can even better distinguish the good or so-called good-bad mixes because they, they have, uh, they have uh, more obvious uh, Results. So, I'll start. Uh, I'll talk about the findings of this uh, study. The first is the decrease of the flexibility index (FI) after aging, mainly resulted from a significant increase in the post-peak load stove, which is M, is not from the fracture energy, which represents rate of crack growth. And uh, the second finding is because of different chew grades and chemical compositions, binder source can significantly affect the IBID results for both unaged and aged conditions. However, it hasn't been um, comprehensively studied, and I believe in the future uh, <coughs> we'll look on this. And the increase of each or all of APR, effective asphalt content and BMA, and the decrease of low temperature sugar induces a decrease in the aging rate of acid, which is what we want. And uh, SMA mixes always show a significant lower aging rate than dense graded mixes. And although 1D95C 95, may not result in same AC aging level as that of 5D85C, it could be used to predict AC long-term aging performance trends because they have same chains, they have, it, uh, it has larger uh, values or is beta estimates. The conclusions from this study is that the IFIT is a valid and effective approach to capture AC aging and it's very sensitive. And the two effective methods may be used to improve the aging resistance. The first is to use a softer binder is uh, because it has uh, that it has a relatively low low temperature low temperature sugar rate and or increasing the effective binder content, and this we suggest to use uh, aggregates with uh, less uh, water absorption instead of increase your binder content. 
but we haven't done any cost analysis uh, which one is better. <clears throat> and 1D95C can be a reasonable and practical alternative long-term aging protocol for IFA to predict aging behavior of AC. So I emphasize alternative here because in the industry, people always rely on uh, 3-day 95C now or 5-day 5C because they believe that these aging protocols can predict at least five to eight years of field aging. But 1-day 95C compared to this aging protocol, it's, it cannot save you that much aging. But here, I want to say that is like in some scenarios, especially for contractors, uh, when, when they are producing their already designed mixes, they may want to fine tune their mixes. And they do not need to wait that long time to uh, have a conclusion. So 1D95C can be used for them to predict their uh, performance after the real long-term aging protocol, which is 3D95C uh, we introduced before in the presentation. So here are some recommendations for future researchers. The effect of chemical compositions of binder on AC long-term aging needs to be investigated. And I believe that's uh, Kunin's work. And uh, additional AC mixes, including variation in composition sources and long-term field performance validation, should be considered in future studies because we haven't done any field correlation uh, in this study. So finally, the acknowledgement. First, uh, I don't for financial support in providing the materials and the technical reviewing panel. And uh, finally, the ICT research staff, our former research engineer, Michael Johnson, and current research engineer, Greg Grenshaw, and our, uh, our friend, Mark, and uh, thanks. So that's all for my presentation today. And uh, any questions? Thank you. energy mostly remain the same but like we conducted some tests on 70 95c or 70 85c we see some sometimes uh, fracture energy decreases after the aging but we don't see a uniform change and uh, based on some studies done by other researchers we found out that fracture energy is not sensitive to, to the aging the real Problem is the slope, which is the propagation rate of the cracking growth. So, so, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I have a question about aggregate because uh, yeah. you said uh, so. Which type of aggregate should you use to control the effective binder content? You said that depending on which type of aggregate, you can reduce the effect of the effective binder. Yes, uh, it depends on the the aggregate types, but I I haven't done any, and I don't know which which types of uh, aggregate have uh, lower water absorption, but it's uh, the water absorption of the aggregate is always written on the uh, job mix design formula, and you can see that. And in this project, <coughs> we see some aggregate from Canada, and those aggregates are uh, very high quality aggregate. They are used in the SMA mixes, which is PM7. They have very low uh, uh, water absorption rate. And uh, we see very good aging rate, and we see very good uh, effective as for content as we want. Thank you. Uh, 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 Follow up question about the yeah. So you just mentioned like uh, FI is pretty insensitive to aging, according to. Uh, no. 
So Fe, which is the fracture energy. Energy. So, so Fi is. Yeah. So Fi was cal is calculated by dividing the fracture energy by the slope times the coefficient, which we use is 0 0.01. So with your so like your fracture energy is almost remain constant, but your slope increase, which induces your a decrease in your flexibility. So you are saying like it is the slope that play plays the main role in yeah. describing the aging of the yes, yes. Okay. not from the fracture energy. Okay. Most yes. More questions? So let's thank our presenter. Uh, no, no, what uh, Puni is saying, we'll need actually some hands to cut paper for the sign. So we're going to have an EOH preparation party in the lounge. It'll just be like an hour tops. <laughs> we need to stick stickers yes. and cut paper. We need this many hands so it can finish the fastest. Why you guys get coffee? Like so let's just close the door party. and do it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, why are we doing it? We can do it. We can do it. Anjali, let's just close the door and nobody leaves if they don't coffee. Including for better to tell her to. Party, yeah. No, he's saying, it's it's party. he's saying to close the door before they do the test. I have I have swords. He gets a pass. I'll get um I'll get uh scissors. Oh, actually, we're doing the party here. Don't put that in near my eye, bro. Actually, I'm gonna this one. Sam, you can help us. You can help us for half an hour. So I got the scissors. I get more scissors. How are we supposed to? We gotta cut them round. Uh, what the